today on Two Decent Blocks. An attorney with Greenbaum Wolf and Ernst, a graduate of Vassar and of the Columbia Law School and very active in a number of liberal and feminist uh, movements, Mrs. Pilpel. Uh, I would like to <laughs> ask some questions about that. <laughs> so we're expecting something really like a strong argument here, right? But Soho's face is kind of like... And married men get an extra bonus because their wives take care of many things and enable them to put more time into their career. I'm sure you're aware of the fact that there are approximately 15% of all homes in which there is only one wager. Notice how she doesn't respond to his rebuttal. She just moves on to something else. Race and gender gaps. William we F. Buckley us. Jr. And before we go on, let me just preface this. This is like in the 70s. So these are conversations yeah. that have been going on for a while. I mean, most of what we hear now. Yeah, this is in the 70s, and they are talking about gender and pay gaps, right? Yep. And yep. we're still having that conversation now. Yep. Harriet uh, yeah. Pilpel, who's well known to this uh, viewers of this program, this is. Pil Pell is a, an attorney with Greenbaum Wolf and Ernst, a graduate of Vassar and of the Columbia Law School and very active in a number of liberal and feminist uh, movements, Mrs. Pil Pell. Uh, I would like to <laughs> ask some questions about <laughs> that face, man. That face, man. That's a face a guy makes and he's like, oh my God. Uh, but you see, he, credentials was not impressive at all to so and the is that she's a lawyer she went to Colombia and on top of that she works for a prestigious law firm so we're expecting something really like a strong argument here right but so's yeah. face is kind of like when 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 William F Buckley mentioned that she is an active member of many feminists organizations yeah, he was just was. like oh just know what time it was. The economics yeah. of job getting in terms of the blacks versus the whites. The statistics I was able to pull together indicate that at the present time, white males make $17,427 on an average basis for the year. Black males make 12738 White females make 10244 and Black females make 9476 It is clear from these figures, as indeed I think it's clear to most of us from what we see, that there is a discrimination against blacks and against women in our present system. Since not all blacks will be superior, how would you try to even that out so that there would be some equality of job opportunities? Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> and let me try to just, let me try to put this in a perspective that makes this argument really, like you see it for what it is, it's it's almost saying, on average, white people get this much uh, amount of hours in sunlight, uh, maybe let's say 10 hours, and black people get five hours. And right from there, just say on the onset, we can see the discrimination in, 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 in just, you know, I guess, the amount of um, sunlight hours that black people to get versus white people. I know I'm making this very absurd example for a reason to say you can't just pick any arena, look and figure out the differences in outcomes, and then with a the preconceived notion say it equals discrimination just because there are differences in outcomes. The assumption that she is making is absent discrimination. 
people will get equal results, e- equal, equal, equal income. Pay. Where when, have you seen that? Where she is getting that from, I have no idea. Because let's say, let's imagine a world where nobody was racist, nobody was sexist, but people still have to go to their jobs. Is she saying that in that environment, everyone would earn the same amount of money? Because and if they don't, no why? Sense. There are other reasons that can account for differences in pay. For example, age. Just because you are younger, you earn less money. If you are 19 year old, you don't have experience, you get paid less compared to a 40 year old, right? And then the industry that you are working on, the level of skill that you have, the level of interest that you have, the, the level of education that you have, all those things, she removed them as if they are nothing and said, okay, the only thing that can account for pay differentials between races and sexes is discrimination. And listen at the words that she used. She said, it's clear to me and everyone else that there is so discrimination. Not, it's not clear to you. <laughs> then then she says, no one here, please. Yeah, sir, yeah. Keep up. What, what can we do <laughs> to make it equal? But you see, where has she seen equality happening anyway? And why is that the goal? Yeah. But it's, let's it's, see. It's, it's this, it's almost like preschool, kindergarten type of value set of everyone has to get the same thing. And these yeah. people have never left kindergarten. It's like, why is the yeah. person getting that? Yeah, and I think they're actually starting to indoctrinate kindergartners by this uh, thing of not keeping scores in sports and not having number one, number two rankings and stuff like that. That mentality, if kids grow up with it, they will end up thinking like this woman. Equality is not the ultimate value in life. It's not. The goal of living is not to get equal results. It was never that. And... Yeah, let's go. I don't want Okay, to let's let's hear business. what Before what so will say. Yeah. Okay. Um I'm sorry you missed the earlier part of the program when I pointed out that uh, where you find uh, people not represented evenly, that does yeah. not show the institutional effect because almost nowhere in human affairs do you find people evenly represented. Oh, if yeah. you if you mm-hmm. compare comparable people with respect to age, with respect to education, etc., you get a totally different picture, both with respect to blacks and women. Now, the figures that I saw, for example, show uh, more recently that if you take black families where the husband and wife are both college educated and compare them to white family where the husband and wife are both college educated, the black family is now earning two thousand dollars a year more. The problem is not. The problem is that very few blacks fall in that category that when you compare mm-hmm. category for category then we're talking about getting people a decent education i'm saying that you cannot say that numbers collected at the employer's place of business reflect simply the employer's policies those no, those numbers reflect underlying conditions in the whole society just as numbers collected at the hospital do not show you that the people are sick because they're in the hospital no i i would agree that point is insanely valid and just yeah. clear for anyone with no bias to to maybe try to you know i guess ponder you can't you can't say just because we the place where we measure and find the discrimination that's where the discrimination apparently Happen. is happening in started and also you cannot look at the results and make conclusions based solely on the results because the results are a reflection of inputs. Mm -hmm. Now, if people are inputting the same thing and getting different results, now we actually have an investigation to launch. Yeah, Yeah. you have a case. But but people don't (laughs) people don't input that's why so is saying here if you compare you have to compare the same things, the same people, a black and white college educated. Yeah, they they don't want you know what? They yes, compare the men and I... women playing sports, for example, and saying because they both play the same amount of hours or whatever, they play the same amount of minutes or they use the same type of ball or they use yeah. the same type of training. So therefore, it's the same thing. Yeah, people have said this a lot. It's now a cliche that you compare, you, are, you cannot compare apples to oranges. But this whole argument of um, an equal... Uh, pay women earning less is exactly comparing apples to oranges because number one even on the same job like you have the same title people's performance is still different in that job to the point where their manager or their supervisor will give another 
uh, employee a bigger bonus than the other one just solely on their performance and their attitude towards work well, even mentioning so, employment even in the family yeah the yeah. kids do not so, even apply themselves equally to things input mm -hmm. matters and just looking at the output is obviously a disingenuous argument and this gets me to wonder is this actually something they do deliberately or they are literally just not able to actually uh, analyze facts and statistics because i think yeah. it's it's a bit of envy mixed in with rhetoric to equal social justice it's yeah. like people who are not really happy with their lives and they see other people doing well and then they come up with all these types of concepts here's what i've seen from my years of experience with these kind of arguments what happens is people already have a vision of how they see the world and what what kind of outcomes they would like to see, right? So because they are a little bit intellectual, they get into the statistics that, like she said. So he she gets the statistics. Okay, white men and this much, black men and this much, women and this much. She sees the differences. Then it it's like an aha moment. Oh. This confirms what I've been believing, that women are paid less than men, black men are paid less than white um, men, and it's because of discrimination. So she already have a preconceived notion of what is happening in the world, and those statistics validates what she's saying. Whereas you're supposed to look at it first from the evidence and then make conclusions in the end. So she, she doesn't have any need to go further, like what So was doing, further into okay, are we comparing the same people? Are the people married? Are they college educated? What age are those people? She doesn't have any incentive to do that because she already found something that confirms her beliefs. So that's what happens most of the time. All right, let's move on. I agree with that, but you would also have to agree that generally speaking, women are paid less, for example, for the same jobs as men. No, I would not. I would not agree with that. If you're talking about women with the same number of years of experience, with the same continuous service, et cetera, et cetera, then when I look at that, I don't find that disparity. I find, for example, in many cases, the women are making more, depending on how you break the data down. The difference with women is between, unmar is between married women and everybody else. That's the real difference. Well, even as to single women, the Census Bureau statistics, the most recent ones I could find, 1978, say that single men are earning $11,100 and single women are earning $9,300. Yes, I, lo I love the word single that is used. When I did my study, I didn't use single, I used never married. You see, a woman who is single at age 40, having spent 10 or 20 years raising children, is really not quite the same as a man of age 40 who's been working continuously for 20 years. And the differential she cited is not that great, so he could easily. If Gotcha was a person, yeah, this guy would be. It. Oh my it's... god! I love you know I love also explains things, and here's, a, here's another thing. You see, obviously there is discrimination that happens somewhere. Somebody is sexist and somebody is racist and things like that. The real question is. To what extent does that discrimination yeah, and that racism yeah. account for the results? That's that's a better question. Because it seems as if when you, we talk like this, people who are on the other side already say, Are you saying there's no sexism? Are you saying there's no discrimination? Such a black Nobody and white that. way of looking at, 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 at life is I, I think it shows a lot of naivety and a very, very deep sense of not understanding how the world functions and works. Anyone who, who works with big numbers and big um, symbols of data understands that there are nuances at least in most of these things that, that do obvious and different variations of, or variables, sorry, of, of, of factors that actually influence the actual total outcome. Talking about inputs, so really, what I what, what I wanted to kind of uh, dial back to was the whole point of um, inputs and outputs. It's it's I think I think the problem that we usually have. I think the problem that we do is we take certain things that are known and we simplify them, pay our nature, and sometimes we don't simplify certain things um, that should be simple, and I think. A mark of a great intellectual is knowing what to do when you are faced with either of the situations to say 
you simply are not going to get high outputs if you put low inputs, unless if you have some sort of inverse, um, you know, inverse uh, in, correlation. In, inverse correlation between the inputs and the outputs that is caused by whatever mechanism you have between the process of inputting and the outputs that gives you some sort of leverage that mm -hmm. multiplies your effort to give you outputs to say if you have enough hours or if you have a certain number of hours you're going to make a certain amount of money at the end of it that's what Songo seemingly is explaining to say married women will put less hours in work and therefore earn less there's no bogeyman in here there's no voodoo or dark science that's working the very mm -hmm. same concept that people seemingly also mistake when they look at certain groups of people that are doing well, they, or at least certain uh, successful men to say, if you're going to say, well, there's a billionaire and he's either evil or there's inequality of what he is getting as the outputs versus the normal man, and you do not stop to look at how much he has put as far as the inputs, or mm -hmm. to look at the other side of the equation to say, if Steve Jobs gets $10 billion, but it, you don't took like a look at the other side of the equation or of the formula to say he's actually also given maybe 10 million um, iPhones to people. You just look at the money, you get half the picture. And this is what most of these people do. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's a very like confused way of looking at the world that miners discrimination there is equality equality understanding that is not true that that statement itself is false will remove a lot of crusades that we have to stomp out every vestige of discrimination and sexism in our society because there are organizations and political parties that are formed just on this basis and there are political candidates that campaign just on this basis as if there is any realistic way, number one, of stop ending those things, sexism and, and racism and discrimination. And number two, as if the end of those things will mean equality in the world. No, it will not. That is why even w amongst people who are the same, like physically looking of the same race and people who, um, who, who speak the same language, even amongst them, there are differences in outcome because not everyone is Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos is a white man, but not every white man is Jeff Bezos. So who is discriminating against the other white man? So this attitude of saying there should be equality as if equality is so normal that it should be expected. I don't know where they get it from. Inequality is the norm. When you find equality for anything, anything at all, that is very abnormal in the world. Yeah. So equal distribution of resources. Be okay, let's accounted for by, by, by the Yes, because race. when I break them down the other way, I, I did this for the academic world, and there I found the uh, women who are never married, which is the term way I, I take it, uh, there they were earning more than the men. And similarly, when the government did data some years ago on women who had been working continuously since high school into, the thir into their, their 30s, uh, there you found that they were making slightly more than men of the same description. So the difference is between married women and everybody else. And married men get an extra bonus because their wives take care of many things that enable them to put more time into their careers. I'm sure mm -hmm. you're aware of the fact that there are approximately 15% of all homes in which there is only one wage earner. So that when you talk wait, about wait. women... Notice how she doesn't respond to his rebuttal. She just moves on to something else. It's a superpower, just deflecting facts yeah. and logic and reasoning. Being able to take care of things for their married mate, wage earner. The fact is that in the overwhelming majority of American homes, the women also work. And therefore, I don't think your explanation that women have other responsibilities and that that's why work, they are... Work can mean part-time work or full-time work. Women do not work full-time to the same extent that men. Part-time workers make less than full-time workers. And you know what, what they did, at least around this time, um, I would say that's different from now is instead of her calling him misogynist or something else, 
she mm, didn't feel like sexist. some common decency of trying to just weasel through as if she didn't hear what he said or in some way tried to actually kind of address which she kind of did but yeah, she didn't in the... really fully address his actual argument so as yeah, something well... and also something you said sorry just to cut you off mm -hmm. you said um, equality is not the norm we are not advocates for anarchy we're not advocates for people basically holding and cornering markets and you know all sorts of uh what do you call it in in inequalities in 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 in, in, in just resources that are not in any way that are unchecked we do advocate for equal opportunities versus equal outcomes then those are two different things for people who've never had this concept being explained do you want to help with that yeah so when you are talking about equal opportunities i'll give you an example right i, I can have as much equal uh, as much opportunity as Kylian Mbappe as he does or Tiger as, Woods for American friends okay or Jones. Tiger Woods to go on a golf course right but that doesn't mean that I'm going to perform like Tiger Woods like LeBron James or Kylian Mbappe because we are different in our skill set in our level of interest in what he is doing and with with something like basketball just our height just because genetically i'm not as gifted as lebron james that alone will mean that our results are going to be different but we want a society in which everyone gets an equal shot but an equal shot doesn't mean that you are going to have equal results. results. The results are determined by other factors. And for other things that are bad, that everyone considers bad, such as discrimination, sexism, racism, whatever, obviously we want to reduce that at the minimum. But the best way to do that is not to go on and launch political crusades and campaign about it. No, free yes, markets for, is the answer. Quarters. Oh, uh, we don't have enough white people in the NBA, so let's <laughs> equalize that. If that was obvious, I think according to the particular standards of inequality and whatever, that should be um, outside, that should be a campaign we should be hearing. But obviously it's, it's for white people, so it will never really actually come to pass. But yeah. what I'm saying is, what Vincent actually basically was touching on, that equality, equality of opportunity is going to not come from obviously trying to figure out what the outputs are going to look like, but it's it, what causes the different outputs or the inequality in resources is for the things, the very things that we cannot actually equalize. So yeah. to say someone's grit, someone's hard work, someone's discipline. So yeah. I can be, things are very individual. I can be the same height as LeBron James. I can have even the same talent. We could be identical twins. But if but just he applies himself it, a lot more than I do, we're definitely not going to get uh, the same results. Yeah, I think maybe we're, we're beating a dead horse here. Most people kind of got it. But I'll just give one last you example. <laughs> yeah, you would think. You see, even the same man is not equal to himself on different days different or days. different times. That is why even when we are looking at professional basketball players, you will say, okay, last game, last season, he was good. This season, I don't know what's going on with this guy. His performance is different. He's the same person, but his performance is different. Maybe because he changed his diet. Maybe because he got divorced. He has personal problems and things like that. Right. Even you might say, OK, why are you talking just about sports? Sports are different when it comes to professional work. For example, if you are a portfolio manager, let's say in a hedge fund, you get distracted. Your first quarter will be terrible. Maybe one quarter you were good and you 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 returned 30 percent. This one you got slaughtered. You are in the negative. You are the same person. You are producing different results, mostly because there is no reason to expect any sort of equality in performance it's not now, natural it's not natural it, to be equal to be even in nature yeah now if you consider a situation where things are as close to equality of uh, uh opportunity as you can get in a family right within a family you see kids that grow up probably went to the same schools the same teachers the same parents they ate the same food they were taught the same values but those kids don't grow up to have the same jobs the same income and the same level of discipline and, and even being, the being same, same appetite to risk and, yeah. and, 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 yeah. and entrepreneurship they will, and they will yeah, you will see that they will be different one kid can grow up to be a judge and other one to be a, a delinquent 
so if you, if you cannot if equalize it, in one family how do you really plan on equalizing between races and people who have varying cultures who eat different food who have exactly. even different religions who believe different things it's just to show this is really <laughs> I, even though you're saying it's a dead horse this is to really try to help mm -hmm. people who've never heard the argument being made for inequality is actually not evil it's not yeah. an anomaly inequality is actually good yeah that's actually yeah. how we incentivize people to go out and work harder. Because if, let's say I'm in a classroom and I'm a professor and I give people a test and say, tomorrow we will have a test. One student goes and studies, one student goes and drinks or parties and comes back to his dorm or to his house at four in the morning, shows up tomorrow at 8 a.m. for the exam. One that did not prepare flungs it. The one that did, uh, that did work hard passes it and I decide in my spare time as I'm grading these two students that I'm going to basically just equate okay this person got 100% this other one got zero I'm going to just divide the total mark by two average everything out as far as the principle of equality I've done the best thing that anyone should do but as far as being fair I've not been fair to the other student that worked hard and the other student that didn't and yeah. That is, at least in its simplest form, the, the, the illustration to show that in, inequalities are actually needed for us to reward those that are actually putting inputs and yeah, exactly. not just look at the outputs. One, one of the things that people who advocate for equality in anything, what they forget is whatever policies you make, well, let's say you implement quotas, they are not they are going to influence future behavior like what you are saying the kid that didn't study the, the kid that studied and you are giving him the same as someone who didn't study why would he study next time next time why? he's not going to and what kind of graduates are we going to have at the end of the semester people who know nothing because they they are not, the incentive structure is destroyed that's what happens when you just send um kids to harvard university for quota reasons and yet they are not qualified to handle the curriculum that harvard offers they end up flunking out of the the, society the is institution not better off. and yeah and we are losing as a society so this yeah. crusades about equalizing people and equalizing this and equalizing that the best we can do is to try and make sure that everyone gets an equal shot to take a chance to 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 exert themselves and to prove themselves that's all we can do we cannot control the outcomes so if we are going to equalize anything let it be opportunity not outcomes the very man i guess uh, in closing the very man we just watched has a court that i would like you know people to obviously think about the very situation i just explained as far as the class and the professor and the two students you can tell it's not going to work it probably never worked and it's not the way that we've had the advancements we've had as as, as a world we've actually incentivized people who put effort into things at least for the greater part of it does that mean there's no examples of people who were dead and were not rewarded for their hard work no but for the greater part of it it's been usually how things work what we've done in the in the west at least according to thomas all is uh, our open quotes in this uh, in this particular court. Most of the social history in the West has been replacing what has worked with what sounded good and did not work. Close mm -hmm. quotes. That mm -hmm. is essentially every work policy you've heard, including the, about this gender pay gap or racial uh, pay gap, whichever it is. These are policies mm -hmm. that do not work. These are things that sound good and sound caring, but they just mm -hmm. don't work. Exactly. We're concerned about things that work, not things that sound good. Exactly. Results matter at the end of the day. Feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I think we can stop here. All right, so guys, let us know. What do you think? Do you think Thomas Sowell has a point on the gender pay gap? Or do you think uh, Harriet and uh, most of the left people that we've had, you know, espouse this argument even up to now are correct? Let us know in the comment sections. Remember, guys, follow your boys. We're trying to make sure we get, you know, traction online. We're trying to grow our subscribership and get our views and everything ticking so that at least we are, you know, putting these videos in front of more people. 
So please, if you're watching, subscribe, like, comment, engage. The two decent vlogs, we out.